Hi, and welcome back to Break 100 Golf. I'm John. You're gonna to love today's video because I'm gonna do a top 10 list. Top 10 most important things you need for your golf simulator. Let's start out right away. Coming in at number 10, your sound or your speaker. Now, you may not think this is all that critical. However, there are a lot of ambient sounds in the golf simulation software, whether it be birds, whether it be water splashes, you know, landing in a bunker, landing on a fairway, landing on the putting surface, hitting the, you know, the pin, you know, it, there's a lot of different things that make the whole experience more immersive. And there really wouldn't be anything more satisfying than playing your buddy and he hits it in the water and hearing that splash. You're probably gonna wanna replay that play and turn up the speaker at that point because it's really awesome, let's face it. Number nine, your landing material. So I've seen some guys that have tried to build, you know, DIY golf enclosures and stuff like that very successfully. And they used proper landing material. And then I've seen some other guys basically throw up a bed sheet. It's very unsafe. The ball comes back at you. And then when it hits the ground, it's bouncing all over the place. It's going to the back of your golf sim space. And that's just not a fun thing for me. And it's dangerous, quite frankly. So making sure that you have a good landing material for your golf simulator setup. Now, these rules are the, this number, number nine and eight, one, they're all subjective. This is just my opinion and based on my journey for my golf simulator to date. And you may have a different top 10 list. However, I believe that these are the 10 most important things. Number eight, your enclosure. You wanna have a good sturdy enclosure that does not move when you hit the ball into it. Preferably something that's like 10 by eight uh, or more of something that will give you a 16 by nine or a 16 by 10 ratio. I have an eight point or eight and a half by eight and a half square uh, golf simulator and that works great for me because I wanted it to only take up one bay of my three car garage, but that limits you on what projectors you can use uh, and whatnot and software. So be aware of that. Buy the biggest enclosure you can and also buy something that's sturdy or build something that's sturdy and very, very safe. If you're gonna build something, the most important thing is safety. Build something that's safe so that when you hit the ball, inevitably, you're gonna have one come back at you no matter what and make sure it's safe. Number seven is your golf simulator space. I personally am very, very lucky. I have a three car garage that's 30 feet wide I can expand it if I want to, and I probably will at some point. And I also have 11 foot finished ceilings, which is really, really nice. Now, that's gonna limit you to what type of launch monitor you can get based on having a smaller space. I have 30 feet you know, wide, which is, you know, I, I can pretty much use any of 20 feet of my, my garage space, and it's 21 feet deep, so I got plenty of space for my launch monitor, which I currently use the Garmin R10. And then I have plenty of uh, space to expand, you know, or to upgrade. You know, I've got a lot of different things that I can do going forward. And when you own a golf sim, it is constantly evolving. There's new products coming out constantly. And eventually I do want to putt with my setup. Uh, it's just more difficult to putt with the, um, with the Garmin. I'm thinking about doing the x putt. We'll see. Next, number six would be your computer. Now, when I initially started, I used Home Tee Hero in the Garmin Golf app and Awesome Golf, which I used with my phone, but that limited me to a basically 16 by nine or 10 projected image from my projector onto the screen and it also, um, you know, is not the most realistic software either. Although the, you know, the Garmin has 42,000 golf courses and uh, it's a great learning tool. And then Awesome Golf is a terrific uh, training coaching program. And it also has, you know, four nine hole golf courses. Uh, but the, you know, the, the practice in Awesome Golf is very, very good. But, 
your computer will allow you to get the best software and you should have a good computer. I currently use GS Pro and it's becoming the consensus best golf simulation software out there. There's a lot of good software that is out there, however, but it's all going to be used with a computer, okay? So get yourself, if you're going to buy a computer, don't just buy an entry level $500 laptop because you're going to hate it. You need to have something that's fast. I upgraded my 16 gig gaming computer as a laptop uh, to 32 gig of RAM and uh, it made a huge, huge, huge difference. And I did a video on that, by the way, testing and also how to upgrade the computer. Number five is your golf simulator software. So we just talked about the computer and how important that is. However, you should always buy the best software that you can afford based on your launch monitor. So if your launch monitor supports multiple versions of software, get the best one you can because you'll enjoy it. So moving on, so the top four, you can argue, can all be number one. Now I have them listed this way because this is what I truly feel. Number four is your launch monitor. You should buy the best launch monitor that you could possibly afford. I bought the Garmin going on eight months ago and it's been the only thing in my golf sim that has been there from the beginning. I have upgraded everything since then. You could say I wasted some money, which would be true. However, the Garmin has been very reliable and it's very versatile. There's a lot of different software that you can use like E6, the Golf Club 2019. You can use, even though it's not supported, you can use GS Pro. These are all very realistic software packages. And really, they're all, I, in my opinion, they're fairly reasonable. I mean, GS Pro is $250 a year and it's it's got hundreds of golf courses. So again, the launch monitor, think about, like me, I'm thinking about putting. So, you know, thinking about putting, the Garmin wouldn't have been the best choice if, if I wanted to do that from the beginning, which now I'm starting to think, well, maybe I'd like to be able to do that. So, you know, I'm, I'm making plans to do that. And like I said earlier, I may do the X putt and try to see how that works. Number three is your screen. Now, this goes along with your projector too. Obviously that must be somewhere. So your screen, you should get a premium screen and nothing else. One, because it will hold up a lot longer and two, because it will give you a very good projected image, okay? Whether you built your own enclosure or whatnot, you know, I, I adjusted my bungees to make my screen as flat as possible. I don't want it flapping around. I don't want there, there to be creases. I want it to look good for my channel and I want it to look good for me, my immersiveness with my golf simulator software and my friends that come over and play. So, you know, just to give you an idea on this screen is I've hit probably 20,000 balls into my screen. It's a premium screen. The indoor golf shop is where I got it through, through Amazon. And it comes with a premium screen. And I've hit like 20,000 balls. My son, who is six foot four, 265 pound athlete, his average swing speeds are between 125 and 130 miles an hour. His ball speeds are 175 to 180 miles an hour. He's consistently hitting drives 320 to 340. Uh, yards and he was over here a couple weeks ago I thought he was gonna hit the ball through the screen I was cringing every time he hit it but guess what my premium screen can hold out to the best hitters like him all right number two is your projector initially I bought a inexpensive $200 projector and it actually ended up being halfway decent I couldn't get the image to fill my screen and I had questions from viewers about that on my channel and it didn't really bother me when I was playing but then when I watched the videos, that's when it really bothered me. Now we're talking about upgrading from a $200 projector to a $1,900 projector that has infinite installation capability, infinitely brighter, infinitely more adjustable, made for golf projector. 
So it has completely transformed my golf simulator setup, which is why I believe it to be so important. You want to get as bright of a projector as you possibly can, so you can play with as much lighting as you possibly can. I have a friend that can't see the ball as well when I initially had the lights down, you know? And then, you know, for my channel, I have to have it brighter in there, you know, so that people can see me instead of being in the dark while I'm playing and demonstrating the software. But at any rate, buy the best projector you possibly can. I could have gotten a 4K projector planning for the future, but I didn't because I believe that the 1080p is good enough for now. Number one is your mat. Do not skimp on the mat. If there is anything at all that you spend your money on in the beginning, spend your money on the mat. Because if anything is gonna screw you up, it is the mat. Number one, you can get injured, especially on a downstairs concrete floor if that's where it is, or let's say like me, I have it in the garage and I, my initial first six and a half months or so, seven months, I was hitting off of a DuraPro mat. Now that mat is awesome. It hit, I, I hit 25,000 swings easily off of that mat and it has held up amazingly. However, you know, especially with your irons, you know, you're, you're supposed to hit ball divot. You know, you're supposed to be hitting down on the ball. And when you're hitting down on that and a half inch below that is concrete, it's not the best, you know, and, and also here's the biggest thing. There is a bounce factor that happens with these mats that really was screwing me up and screws up tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of golfers who practice off of mats. And that is this, when you're swinging down at the ball and you hit behind the ball on the mat, it's going to slide or bounce and maybe hit the sweet spot of that ball fooling you into thinking that you're having a good swing and connecting with the ball properly. Then you get on the golf course and you're wondering why 75% of your swings, you're hitting it fat or you're hitting it thin or whatever you're doing. And it's frustrating. And it was frustrating for me when I first started my golf league this year. And I, was, I thought I was gonna be good this year because I practiced so hard. And then I got out there and I realized I just wasn't that good yet. Now I've gotten better. So I, I improved my mat. Uh, I got a, a real feel country club elite mat that is more forgiving. It's a lot thicker and more comfortable. And uh, it also, you can swing down on it, down and through the ball to give you more of that ball divot action so that you're not fooled into thinking that you have a good golf swing. Because if you hit behind the ball on this mat, it will penalize you, okay? or any of the mats. You know, I, I see that like the Holy Grail mat is pretty popular, guys have done reviews on that. So in all this, basically what I'm saying is, buy the best mat as you possibly can, because it's that important to your golf simulator and to your golf game and to your health. All right, so that top four, like I said, is certainly debatable for sure. Launch monitor, screen, projector and mat to me any of those could easily be number one i had to organize them in some way but i do believe that the mat is super important which is why i put it number one all right so i hope this helps you if you're thinking about building a golf simulator in your space that you have and i hope that if you already have one you think back and you think gosh i he, he's right i should have done this or oh he's right about my mat or he might be right about the projector because guess what I didn't really have anybody to tell me except for the guys on YouTube that made their videos. And I watched them, I'm like, well, I wish I would have done that. And I watched this guy and that guy. I wish I would have done that. So hopefully this helps you. Thanks for watching today. Please smash that like button and share it with your friends that are considering either building a golf simulator or have a golf simulator. It's also very important to me if you subscribe to my channel, if you're not already subscribed, it'll help build my channel and help me to grow the channel so that I can continue to bring content like this to you and all of YouTube. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.